Howdy, Mike McCoy. Another talking video. It's coming a snowstorm here. We can't work again today. Couldn't work yesterday. And, uh, uh oh, you cock out a little bit. Let me loosen you up here. How's that? I got you on cock out. But it's coming snowstorm here. It probably got an inch or so of snow and it's still snowing. And uh, we're working today. Got to go over to Laurel today and check on the house. Renders is out of there and I've got to keep heat on it and stuff. I got some heat going yesterday so I hope I got it going. I believe that. Got some work I got to do to it too. I'll take y'all over there and show you when we get started and I'll get them out. But today thought I'd talk about, so you want to be in the timber industry. So there's a lot of people that shows interest in this. You know, it's a logging like channel and sawmill and stuff, and a lot of people watch it and think that's what they'd like to do. And let's talk about it a little bit. So you want to be logger, sawmiller, lumber buyer, whatever. First off, how smart are you? If you're really smart, you won't do it because you'll be a lawyer, or doctor, or something like that. So they want to make money anyway. If you're really dumb, you can't do it. So you need to be somewhere kind of in the middle of the road. Not too smart, not too dumb. Leaning on smart, away from dumb. Okay. If you've got that covered, okay, good for you. Number two, how much money you got? How much money can you get? For if you're going to go into the business, you're looking at it. probably, you'll probably need between fifty and hundred thousand dollars to get started. I'll get you started, you know. You come up with that kind of money, rich uncle loan it to you, or die and give it to you or something. And if you've got that kind of money, don't go out and spend it. Uh, just because you got it, don't spend it. That, if you've got that kind of money, that means you can borrow some money and go borrow you some money and keep that money for. Stuff happens when you're in this business. Okay, we got that covered. You got you enough money to get into business. Have you ever bought a tree? Do you know how to cruise timber? So that's basic stuff that you have got to know. And I don't, you might get an idea on YouTube watching it and all this stuff, but you really need somebody that knows what they're doing to show you. I mean, a lot of weight is raised in this. I mean, he, his family's been in sawmill ever since he's been, and you can tell he's as nervous as a black cat with a long tail and a room full of rocking chairs, and he's going out and cruising timber. It, it ain't easy. It ain't hard either, but you've got to know what you're doing. And if you've got somebody that will train you, that is great. For you can't just go out and do it. How good are you at business? Are you business oriented? Are you the type of feller saying, ah, oh, it'll be all right, it'll work out. For if you're that type of feller, which I am, get ready to lose your shirt. You have got to be business oriented. You don't go out and buy a patch of timber with a handshake and a check. You go out and buy a patch of timber with a contract and a check. If you, that's this good business practice. And if he don't want, if a landowner don't want a contract, you don't want his timber at no price. For he's he's going to screw you if there's any way possible. And uh, you don't want to do you don't want to do that. I've been there, done that. Get you something where both of you knows where you stands, where you ain't got to clear half his farm. And he knows what he's going to get, and you know what you're going to give him. Okay, got that covered. Are you mechanically inclined? In other words, can you turn ranches? If you can't turn ranches, you'd better have a whole bunch of money instead of just a little bit. Instead of having $50,000, you'd better have $200,000. Because it costs to bring a mechanic out and fix stuff. And there will be times that you'll have to bring a mechanic out, it'll just be beyond your ability. But most of this stuff you can do. And if you're mechanically inclined and you're good at problem solving, 
That is a huge, huge, huge plus for those a lot of problems solving to be done in the timber business. Are you personable? People like to do business with people that's personable. They don't like to deal with ISOs. But now there's a certain amount of ice holiness it, it people respect. But, you know, you can't be that fella that puts your arm around everybody's neck and his best buddies forever, but you can't be that ice hole that pisses everybody off either. You gotta be somewhere in the middle there. You can do that, you'll be all right. What is your work ethic? Do you give 100%? Do you give 80%? For I promise you, if you go into this business and you ain't willing to give a hundred percent, don't go into this business. Especially when you very first start out, you're gonna have you're gonna have to be the grunt, the boss, the bank. You gotta be it all, and it ain't easy. Trust me, it ain't easy. And don't depend on your family or anybody like that to help you nine chances out of 10 they won't. Matter of fact, I've been in this business since 1985. I doubt that the people I know and was friends with has bought $10,000 worth of product off of me since I've been in business and I've done millions of dollars worth of business. Your friends and family for lack of a better word, jealous and they ain't gonna help you. Or they did in my case. You might have a better family than me. You might have better friends than me. For neither one of mine is really good. So, know what you're doing. Where are you gonna sell your products at? Before you ever start. Know where you're going. You can't put a sawmill up in pine country and figure you're gonna sell hardwood lumber. You need to know where your markets is. You need to talk to your markets. You need to have a plan. You need to have somebody in place that will buy your product. Somebody that is preferably not a crook. Now you get that done. What kind of business are you on? If you think that you're gonna go out here and buy a high production sawmill with all the accoutrements that goes with it and start out, you're gonna be deep, deep, deep in debt. I mean deep in debt. Most of these sawmills that's real successful, it's a period of years that they've got to where they're at. You don't just start out like that. There was a sawmill in this area and it was a big sawmill. It had been run down a little bit, but it was still very productive. I mean, this mill would put out like 100,000 feet a day. This guy was in the bush, grows little trees, Christmas trees, shrubbery and all that. He was in that business. He bought this sawmill. And the reason he bought this sawmill, he was needing some paneling of some sort for one of his projects and nobody was giving him. He just decided to buy him a mill. He's mad, I guess. I don't know. He gave $4 million for that mill. When they declared bankruptcy on that mill, it was $18 million in debt. He kept adding to it, adding to it, adding to it. And the Great Recession hit. He fell flat on his face. Probably lost a chunk of his fortune. The mills changed hands like three times. China had it at one time. I don't know if they've still got it or not. But, you know, you can't just go out and buy something like that and expect for it to make a return or not millions of dollars. I mean, just the interest on $18 million would be astronomical. That'd be more than what most mills make, big or small. So keep that in mind. Don't get too big too quick. What kind of mill you gonna buy? You gonna buy your little wood miser band mill? You gonna buy your circle mill like I've got? You gonna buy a big circle mill? It's all decisions to be made. And it's a whole lot in what your business plan calls for. Your business plan needs to coincide with what you can buy and sell. 
if you can come up with the logs and come up with the markets, go with as big a mill as you can. If you can't, go with as small a mill as you need to. There's nothing wrong with one of these small band mills like a wood miser or something other like that. I personally don't like them, but just because I don't like them don't mean they're a bad mill. And I do know people that's made a lucrative living with one of them things, and I know people that's lost their butts with them. It's luck of the drop. But uh, this old boy I know, he used to hang around my mill a little bit. He was a supervisor at the plant out here, and it shut down. And he hung around a little bit, and I know he was just trying to learn the business. He went out and bought him a brand new wood miser and uh, went to work at a guy I know that had a dry kill, sawing for him. And he has made a real good living for the last probably 20 years. And, you know, have a plan that will work. And if you've got a plan that'll work, it'll work. Another guy I know went out and bought one of the biggest wood misers you could get. Had a three-phase electric motor on it and that and all that. And he was going to try to production saw that thing. Well, you can't production saw with a little old band mill like that. It won't work. And he lasted about six months or a year and he was gone. So, but have a plan that will work. Have confidence in that plan. Don't have something you think will work. Have something that you know in your mind is going to work. Something that you're willing to bet money on because you are betting money on it. And help. Hard to find good help. Now, I can tell you that for a fact, but it's out there. It's out there. And when you do find good help, treat them halfway decent. One of the most successful sawmillers I ever met told me one time. He said, my help comes first. They get paid first. But now whatever's left over is mine. So be sure you got enough to pay your help. Make sure you got something left over. But don't take away from your help to add what it's supposed to be to kept over. That won't work. If you treat your help like crap, you won't never have no good help. And when you get that mill going, you get to making money, and this is really hard, and it was super hard for me, and one of the reasons that I am no more successful than what I am. Don't get in the mindset that you want it all. You can't have it all. Other people need to make their money. Let them make it. If it costs you 10% to sell your lumber and they can do a better job than you can, that's the best 10% you ever spent in your life. That right there costed me a fortune. I had one of the best lumber brokers that I've ever seen. He was making me money hand over fence and he made it look so simple. I thought, well, shit, I don't need him. It's simple. I got rid of him and I've not sold another tractor and trailer load of grade lumber since then and that's 15 years ago long. You gotta be careful of the enemies you make. Some of them might be powerful and he was. And I mean he he's a good guy, still is. If he come by here he'd be more than welcome. And he has come by here since then and we've never sat down and talked to that and I should apologize to him for it, but he knows. He knows what I've done. He knows what he done. What he had to do, and I don't hold it against him a bit. I deserved it. Don't screw with people who's trying to help you. It'll bite you big time. Karma is a bitch. So that covers that. Buy good equipment. Don't. I mean, if you can, you can't go out here and buy everything new when you're starting out. But buy something that's decent, something that you don't have to work on every day. And. Like old sawmill like mine, it's, it's very mechanical and it ain't that hard to keep up. It really ain't. I mean, if a man is real ambitious, you could take old two-thirds of wear-out mill like mine, you could get that thing up in shape and it, it, it'd serve you for years. But it's got to be in shape, you know. And your forklifts and your loaders and, and your trucks. And be real careful of trucks. I'm not a fan of trucks. If there's any way you can hire your truck and done and it, do it but in this business it is virtually impossible to do that there's people out there be glad to truck for you but you can't get them to truck when you need them to truck and lumber is something you can't sit around especially in the summer but now trucking is a problem trucking is very expensive the insurance in trucking is expensive the liability in trucking is expensive so keep that in mind Keep your truck into a minimum. Don't run out there and buy a bunch of brand new trucks. Nine chances out of ten, 
you know, you're talking like $200,000 a piece or close to it now, I'm sure. For new trucks, you can go buy a good used truck, you can go buy four or five for what that is, or maybe more. For nine chances out of 10, that truck ain't going great distances like an over the road trucker and stuff. And you can get it back home to work on it. So, watch your trucking. And if, like if you put in a sawmill, you gotta find some good loggers. They're out there, but they're hard to find. You get a bad and they'll bankrupt you. I promise you they will. Logger Wade's got the best business plan I've seen. They do all their logging, all their sawmill, it's all in house. They don't have to depend on nobody. It's all a family run operation and it works. Now there was a guy here in Buncombe County he wouldn't allow his loggers to have no trucks. He would hard jobs logged, but he had his own trucks and knuckle booms that went out there and picked them up. Usually they'd send a road tractor and a knuckle boom truck and they'd get, you know, load the road tractor and knuckle boom truck and bring it in. And that way it kept the stealing down. It won't eliminate, but it'll keep it down. And there's somebody coming around all the time that's watching. If you just turn a bunch of loggers in the woods and don't never go check on them, they'll steal you blind. And you don't have to steal many veneer trees to really knock a dent in your profit. I mean a big dent. So keep that in mind too. Know who you're dealing with. Don't trust them. Don't trust anybody. Everybody that you fool with in business, do not trust them. Be courteous, be kind, but always keep that eye on them. For when you start trusting people, a lot of times bad things will happen. Be jovial, friendly, pat them on the back, keep an eye on them. If you never know. The people that has hurt me the worst financially is people that I trusted. That I shouldn't have ever trusted, but I did because they sung me a beautiful song and there's just honey dripping off her tongue and I trusted them. Don't never trust nobody, you won't get in trouble. But that's pretty much it and one more thing whatever line of the wood business you want to get into whether it be logging saw milling whatever, get that shiny pickup you own and ride down the road and everybody that's in that business look at their house look at the loggers houses look at the sawmillers houses and you'll see who's making the money Old fella told me that one time and that holds true. The, the better the sawmill, the better the house. The better the logger, the better the house. Bigger the crook, smaller the shack. Keep that in mind. And that, that works real well. And don't be scared. If you go into something other scared, you'll fail every time. Don't be one bit scared. Have confidence in yourself. Say, I can do it. Try to have a wife that'll have confidence in you, if that means a lot for you. If your wife ain't got no confidence in you and all the time putting you down, that makes doing your business twice as hard. And if she is that way, don't let her be part of the business. For she can bankrupt you in a hurry, too. Uh, you, you, both of you, need, if, she, if your wife is going to be part of your business, both of you need to be reading from the same page and have the same goals. And you're going to have problems. And it is hard to work family. Uh, I worked my wife and my son for years there, and that, that was really hard. You can't just get on them for being wrong, for they're never wrong. And it, it, it's tough. It, it, I ain't saying it can't be done, but it's hard. And you've got to you know, use a certain amount of diplomacy in that. For a woman you're pissing off at work, woman you're going to go to bed with that night, and you need to keep that in mind. But, you know, if, but if you're both reading from the same page, usually it ain't too bad an argument you're going to have. I know there was a time here that mother, if if I made a thousand dollars, is well, why wouldn't that twelve hundred? If I made, you know, it, it never was enough. 
And we had a long, hard discussion about that, and it ain't been brought up no more. I mean, you can't get with so much out of something. So keep that in mind. If you can do everything right, you'll be a success. If you do everything wrong, you won't last long. If you're about halfway wrong and right, you probably make a decent living there. And that's where I'm at and what I think. If you got any questions, ask me. I'll at least be honest with you. I'm about out of the business, so I ain't got nothing to gain or lose either one. Talk at you later.